Our days of avoiding sales taxes by shopping in our shorts on the couch could soon be coming to an end, folks. A new internet sales tax bill passed the Senate this week with, wait for it, bipartisan support. But it's going to face some stiff opposition in the House. The new law would require most retailers to collect sales tax on items sold online. Some Republican lawmakers in the House say it's not going to happen because that's a tax increase, so that means they'll block passage. Zachary Carabell is an author and columnist for Reuters, also a CNBC contributor, and an all-around expert. Uh, J.J. Ramberg is the host of MSNBC's Your Business, another expert. Good to have both of you on a Saturday afternoon. Thank you. Good to uh, be here. Here's, here's the thing, J.J. State governments say they are getting hosed. They claim they are losing a lot of money to the Internet. 2012, states lost out on a collective total of more than $23 billion by not being able to collect taxes on Internet sales. You pay sales taxes when you buy an item at a store. Why shouldn't you pay sales taxes on things you buy online? Yeah, let's just give a little history to this. Yeah. So in 1992, the Supreme Court um, ruled that basically if you are a retailer and you sell to another state, someone in another state, that retailer does not have to collect taxes for that state. Now, you are supposed to personally report those taxes but in effect, of course, nobody does that, right? Did you ever, you no. know, you bought something in North it's, Carolina. It's Did tough you to keep it? track. It's tough to keep track. <laughs> yeah, so, so basically now what is happening is they're saying, okay, actually, let's figure out a way to collect those taxes. Nobody's self-reporting. Let's figure out a way to get that money to the states. You, uh, Zachary, you write in your column uh, this week or last week, I can't recall, but it's the Edgy Optimist column in part. The proposed law is entirely about raising taxes. The question, the question then is whether these these are taxes that ought to be raised, and if this is the way to raise them, you ask the question, what's your answer to that question? Well, I think, look, we do live in a world where government both requires revenue and we require government to do a whole series of things for the commons. So the idea that there would be an entire area of commerce and the fastest growing area of commerce, meaning e-commerce is really where the most dynamic aspect of the economy is. And it's not just cannibalizing from brick and mortar stores. You know, the boutique opens, they have a website, it just augments their business. So I think it's entirely appropriate for there to be some revenue collection aspect of this new economy and we haven't figured out a way to do it. I just think this is basically taking an old law, shoehorning it into a new level of commerce and doing so in a way that is both ineffective and probably harmful to the businesses that it's collecting it from. JJ, if the law does, does pass, and again, it's got a steep climb, but there are a lot of folks who say, well, you know, it may not happen now, but a few years from now, there's a good chance this will be a reality. If it passes, retailers are going to have to collect the tax, uh, going to have to collect the tax and then, and then remit that to the state where the product was actually delivered. Right. How heavy of a burden is that going to be, especially for small business? So, okay, so a lot of people have been saying this is a big burden, right? And indeed, there are thousands and thousands of tax municipalities. It's not just states, it's local taxes as well. I, I actually personally don't think that's going to be such a problem. There are really? so many entrepreneurial companies out there. I mean, Amazon has to do it right now in all of the states where, where they have Nexus, basically, where they have a presence. They're having to collect taxes there. I think that software can do this. It, Anything for a small business is hard, but this is just simply placing numbers. People are going to aggregate this and get it done easily. I don't know if you agree with that. Well, or I mean, that. I think, yes, there is a software component. Actually, the bill mandates each of these states to develop harmonious software. I'm a little more skeptical that the mandate will then actually translate into good well, software. I don't know if the states will do it, right. but there will be somewhere, right? So eBay, Google Wallet, Amazon, somebody right. who does the back end for right. a lot of these online companies. Someone who does the heavy lifting for them. But I think, I, I think part of the problem this exposes is in an e-commerce world, the idea that these are state level taxes that should be collected. You know, you and I live in a state. We have a mm -hmm. residence. Yeah. The idea that really businesses have that kind of physical location whereby they're deriving the commons from the local police force, the local fire department, that's part of the problem. And, and, and part of what I say in the column is a lot of people have talked for years about collecting a VAT, which every other European and value-added tax. Value added tax, which is actually a much more both simple and and way of distributing the tax burden among sellers, wholesalers, customers. It ain't going to happen. Right. I was, under, I was just going to ask you about I'm political feasibility. no illusions of this yeah. going on right now, but I, as, a, as someone writing and putting ideas out there, 
it's worth talking about. How strong is the opposition in the House going to be to this idea? It's pretty strong. I mean, look, Republicans are saying this is a tax, and there are people out there who are saying anything that's a tax, we are not going to support. And so it's strong, but it is, it, it's possible that it will pass. It's got a lot of support as well. And if not now, then at some point in the future, because at the end of the day, we are talking about, we're not talking about a, a few million. I mean, we're talking about $25 billion, and that's probably a conservative estimate. In an industry that is growing significantly. Right. Right. But you raise an interesting point. I hadn't thought about that. The fact that these businesses, a lot of these businesses don't rely on traditional, uh, some of the traditional services that are provided to brick and mortar businesses. Yeah, and again, I mean, what this does expose, unfortunately, in my mind, is that this was co sponsored by a Republican in the Senate, which is unusual because they got a lot of lobbying yeah. from small businesses. But it's just a way of like tacking on something to an old piece of tax legislation without really reconceiving of what's the most effective way to collect revenue in a world where a lot of commerce is online, where increasingly things are national, and how do you help states meet their tax obligations? And this doesn't do anything to Zachary Carabell, JJ Ramberg. I've enjoyed our conversation. This has been good. You Thank guys you. will have to come Thank back. You. And bring your family too. You guys <laughs>